Today on Hands-On Photography, we are stepping away from the business aspect of this photography space. We're going to get back to the roots of it all. We're going to get back to the passion. We're going to get back to the community of photography. And I got to tell you, this week's guest is the person to talk about photography and community. Boy, mm, y'all stay tuned. This is going to be a good one. This is Twit. Listeners of this program get an ad-free version if they're members of Club Twit. $7 a month gives you ad-free versions of all of our shows, plus membership in the Club Twit Discord, a great clubhouse for Twit listeners. And finally, the Twit Plus feed with shows like Stacy's Book Club, The Untitled Linux Show, The Giz Fizz, and more. Go to twit.tv slash club twit. And thanks for your support. Hey, what's happening, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt. This is Hands on Photography, my favorite, lovely show each and every week here on Twit TV. Yes, every Thursday, I get the opportunity to sit down and share different tips and tricks that are going to help make you a better photographer and a better post processor. And every now and then, I get the opportunity to be blessed with the presence of another great photographer. And that's what we're going to do this week. But before we get into the episode, please allow me to welcome all of the brand new listeners and viewers of the show. Welcome to you. Thank you for popping in. Go ahead and subscribe in whatever podcast app you're enjoying this on. Or even even if it's our YouTube channel, go ahead and subscribe right there. Yes, we are available on YouTube. We are available on Apple Podcasts. We're available on whatever the heck Google uses. I still don't know what their podcast app is called. Knowing Google is probably just called podcast. Who knows? Anyway, whatever app you're using, go ahead and subscribe right now. Go ahead and leave me a star rating or comment or whatever it is that app uses to help push us up in the search for a podcast, photography podcast. It does help us out. Or if you can't quite figure out the podcast description stuff, just go to the website, twit.tv slash hop. That's twit.tv slash H-O-P for hands on photography. And you'll see all the subscription options there. And you'll see the previous episodes and previous show notes with all of those wonderful nuggets that I get from great photographers like today's guests. All right. Thank you for that. But let's go ahead and get started with this week's episode. OK, so I know in the last couple of weeks I've been pivoting into photography as a business, you know, because a lot of you have reached out and said, hey, Ant, we've been watching your show for 137 episodes. <laughs> so what what can we do to, to be a photographer that gets paid for our work? Yeah. You know, so I got into all of that and we did a lot of different baby steps. But I want to get back to the core of photography, you know, and, and, and the passion behind it. For me, there is, there's some passion there because I love the art. But then there's also the community side of it that I really, really enjoy when it comes to the world of photography. And today's guest is somebody that really embodies the, the words of photography community. And if you're following them, on, if you're following online, you can see that. And if you're not following him online, what is wrong with you? We need to fix that. <laughs> So please allow me a second here to welcome today's guest, my man, Mr. Braden Williams. How you doing, brother? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm super excited to get to talk about the photo community and <laughs> everything involved with it and kind of my journey and story. Yeah. So I, I, I can't wait. Oh, man, I'm I'm really, really glad to, to have you here. I remember reaching out to you and thinking, uh, he's not going to come on here. He's got too much going on. You know, he's, he's just no. He's busy. He's managing the community, if you will. <laughs> but you, 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 I'm so glad that you accepted the invitation to pop on here because I really do enjoy watching you online. You know, I, particularly Twitter online. And we'll get to your Twitter feed momentarily. But I just enjoy watching what you're posting each and every day uh, from a photography standpoint, as well as as well as the photography community standpoint. But before we get into that, um, let me just have you sort of introduce yourself and, and tell folks where you are, because all I know is you're an Indiana, Indiana based photographer that not only focuses on photography, you also focus on video. Uh, so, what, so what tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. So my name is Braden Williams, but online I go by Braden Creations and I actually started um, doing photography a couple years ago 
But now it's become my job. I graduated in December of 2021 from Purdue University. Boilermakers. Which is super exciting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks. And uh, it, it was, it was uh, you know, cut for the thing. I didn't know what I was going to do. And I, there were some job applications at the university. And I applied and I was like, oh, you know, maybe I'll, <laughs> I won't get the job or who knows. I didn't trust my skills at that time, just about eight, six to eight months ago. And I got a call back from them. And now I work for the Purdue for Life Foundation at Purdue University doing photo and video. So we do a lot of the marketing, a lot of um, fundraising stuff. It's been a blast, but it's been really nice because I get to use the skills that I practice every day with Twitter and with other social media. And I get to apply that to my actual real time job, which is really, really cool. And it's a perfect opportunity. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, I was going to bring it up later, but you beat me to the punch. The Purdue for Life. Tell me tell me a little bit more about it, because I, I, I see it as just a another great outreach that, you know, an organization is doing to try to help build community and bring people together. Tell me a, a little bit about Purdue for Life. Yeah, so we have a ever growing team of people and I am one of two photographer videographers, which is really cool. I, I he was alone for a long time and I feel so bad for him because we have so many <laughs> projects coming out all the time. Um, but yeah, so I in my team, really, we do a lot of stuff for the alumni association. So try to bring people from like prior that they're about to come to Purdue, or maybe they've already graduated from Purdue. We try to get them involved in all of these community events that are going on on Purdue campus. Mm -hmm. And my job is really to capture those, you know, moments and all the events that are going on and really have a quick turnaround to get those out. We do a lot of press release. We do a lot of big fundraising events. So a lot of these things have a lot of people involved and a lot of other things rolling with it. So I always have to stay on my toes. <laughs> it keeps me busy. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking here at the feed for Purdue for Life, and I love how it says, stay connected, get involved, give back. Hashtag ever grateful, ever true. That's, yes, that's and, good stuff. And I love it, too, because it's, it's really like another community thing. It's like I, I have my own personal community that I help run, and, and there's awesome people there. But it's the same thing with my actual work mm -hmm. where I'm getting paid and I get to go into every day. And it's, it's, it's awesome to have community on both sides. And they're very different communities, which is a plus. So when you're not shooting and working on your projects with Purdue for Life, what are what's what's your photography or video client if you're who's your photography or video client if you will when you're not working with purdue for life because i know you get out and about and because there's there's 24 hours in a day and based on your feed you're using 23.999 of those hours creating content exactly <laughs> yeah it's it's a challenge um personally aside from work and aside from twitter I'm doing a lot of, I, I try to go out and do photo projects and challenge myself individually. Mm -hmm. Like currently right now I'm starting, I found out that iPhone photo awards is a thing. I didn't know that that was a thing. So yeah. I've been going out and challenging myself to take only photos with my iPhone and to sometimes not edit them at all because for those awards, you're not supposed to edit really. Right. Because the AI so really does been, a lot of it for you anyway. Exactly, exactly. And, and I've really been challenged my challenging myself and stepping outside of my comfort zone and putting the DSLR away for a little while and just using the phone I have in my pocket, which is the iPhone 13 Pro Max. I know yes. a lot of people on my Twitter feed ask me, what are you using? What are you using? A lot of the photos <laughs> up there are actually from my phone, which is a testament to show that you don't need to have $10,000 worth of gear to go take good photos. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and then I'm also doing client-based work. People will sometimes reach out to me on once in a blue moon when I am free and I'll go out and I'll do portraits. And I really love doing animal photos, specifically cats and dogs. Mm -hmm. I, I love pet portraits and people mm -hmm. have seemed to love them. So mm -hmm. it's been, it's been great. And I'm excited that I get to do that. Now, see me, if you're, if someone were to ask me, ask me to guess or describe you i would say yes this is a he's a prolific photographer and he definitely loves to go out on on a hike 
with this camera, like always out in nature. Is, is that the case? Because a lot of the stuff that you publish is beautiful stuff in nature, whether it's just you out with the iPhone doing your, your self challenge, if you will, or if it's some of the client work that you actually have permission to share online. I noticed there's a lot of nature with your stuff, not a lot of studio shots with your portraiture, but a lot of nature and natural lighting kind of thing. Is that, is that, is that accurate? Yeah, it, it really is accurate. And, and that's something that I actually hold to myself a lot is I, I try to get out of the studio and to get out of a building and I want to go outside. I love editing greens and I love capturing bugs and trees. And my favorite thing is whenever I'm out on a hike, I'll see a beautiful landscape. And I think, how would I see this if I was laying on the ground? So I put the camera on the ground and I take it and I'm like, whoa, the trees are huge. And that's just a cool perspective. Or just recently, I was in Garden of the Gods in Illinois, which is kind of far from where I'm at in Indiana. Mm -hmm. And we took a little trip out there, me and my fiance, Nicole did. And it was magical. And I was like, whoa, how am I going to capture these awesome cliffs that are made by a seabed over millions and millions of years ago? I was like, how yeah. am I going to capture that? We're in Illinois, you know, it's like, yeah. it's not, yeah. it's not normal to see that there. So I, I tried different perspectives. I tried getting low angles on the rocks. I tried doing high angles, like a bird's eye view, but mm -hmm. I'm just standing on a cliff and I love doing nature stuff. It all started with nature. Um, I, my parents, my dad is a wildlife biologist and forced tree like department oh, person i don't oh, know exactly what it's you get it department. honest <laughs> yes so so i've been around it my whole life and it's been kind of ingrained in my memory nature's beautiful and and i started out just trying to capture it and it turned into just being the most fun i've ever had <laughs> i love it and that. i love to hike it, it's a good way to get active and there's a bonus i get to bring the camera and take photos or my phone as of recently that is so daggum awesome. Uh, I, I need to do more nature photo walks myself and, and you're, you're definitely reminding me of that. So thank you yeah, and, and, for and that's giving me the kick thing. in the butt. <laughs> that's another thing that I want to add too, is a lot of the photos that I do take are just local parks. I don't go, so, sometimes I don't go far. I'll just go down the road and there'll be a park. Mm -hmm. And if you can just find an area that maybe doesn't have a road, look for areas that either don't have signs or something, and you can make the most out of it. You can make someone think you're in that deserted wilderness when right. in reality you're just right just, down the street yeah from just in your backyard <laughs> exactly exactly it's the most cliche thing but it's so true i love that i love that now i want to before i get into your photos here because there's one in particular yes. on twitter that i really really love and you pretty much hit the nail on the head as you just told us about what you enjoy but before we get into that i want to just dive into the aspect of community with you you know when i when i got a whiff of you, if you will, on Twitter. I, I don't know how long ago it was, but Twitter suggested you to me. And of course I followed. I was like, oh, this is another great, great photographer. But after I followed you, I noticed there was more to it than just the photos. You are building a community around your Twitter feed and every single day, and this is not an exaggeration, every single day, you are posting whether it's your own photos or somebody else's photo and you're getting a conversation started and you're getting more people connected and those folks are connecting it's like oh wow you're a photographer too wait a minute you're you're just around the corner from me we should go out and, and shoot together I, i'm seeing a lot of that what what was it that 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 went off in your head to say, you know what, I want to start more of a photography community and, and make it better than than anything that's that's out there? You know, what 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 was the thought process? What 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 brought you to where you are now in your I, I think there's a, I think there's a couple things with it. Mm -hmm. And it, it started whenever I first got on Twitter, it was a big ocean of scary content you know there's the political side there's the video side there's the youtuber side there's the podcasting side and mm -hmm. i i saw that people had been posting photos and i had had twitter since 2019 but i didn't really use it yeah and i was like what will i do with my twitter and i had a hard time myself finding community and finding people that thought the same way or maybe thought outside the box but we're still taking pictures and yeah doing something like what i'm doing yeah and i was really in search for it especially because 
Instagram's moving towards video. And that was kind of around in 2021 when I was looking to go to Twitter mm -hmm. and nothing against Instagram, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. um, I was looking to go to Twitter and I was like, I just need some sort of community. I need people to talk to. I need people to bounce my ideas off of, or I just need to see content that's not my own so I can <laughs> think a little more creatively. You know, yeah. sometimes you get in those little roadblocks. And so I made my Twitter account active again. I had been off of it since I had made it in 2019. And in that time period, right before making my first tweets, mm -hmm. I was in a class at Purdue and it was a something, I don't remember the exact name of it now, I really should, but it was basically a digital class mm -hmm. that taught about online communities and how they've been super, super useful all the way back whenever the internet was first created. And I kind of took that idea and I was like, wow, that's actually genius. Like, why don't I try to do that? But with the photo community, because I've seen it on Instagram, I've seen it on other platforms, but I was like, I haven't really seen a strong community on Twitter. So I kind of took it upon myself to make these threads while also posting my own work into those threads. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of cater them to what I'm also interested in sometimes. So like, for instance, I would do a lot of forest ones and I would do a lot of landscape ones, but I try to throw in things that I'm also not very interested in right now, but that doesn't mean I can't be later um, to see those perspectives. And something that was really big from that class that I did take was they explained that so it's a lot easier for people in other cultures and other countries that speak different languages mm -hmm. to read simple style sentences. So that's why all my threads are photographers share your like X, awesome y, landscape photos, yeah. retweeting all. And that way it keeps a very consistent, almost rubric and guideline, but also in that it's really legible and it translates really well from what I'm aware, all the translations that I've done through them work very well and that way people from all around the world can share their work and they don't have to just speak english that's which i think is really brilliant. cool and it opens the community to just even more people that is absolutely brilliant you know i'm as you were s telling this story i'm I'm sitting here laughing to myself like i think this guy is insane he wants to go to twitter <laughs> <might be> <laughs> he wants to go to twitter and start yeah. up a brand yeah. new community with you know because twitter is known as a big cesspool on the internet mm -hmm. you know and and i totally disagree with that sentiment by the way yeah i, I enjoy twitter but yeah and, that, and that I, takes a I'm lot gonna, of guts my man yeah well thank you and, and i want to add to that too is that it wasn't easy i right. think and I think that's the challenge. And that's maybe why other people didn't do it to begin with is because you, ha I had to try. I mean, I still continue to mm -hmm. push the boundaries on what I can do with this and how I can connect people from all over. And it, it gets stressful and it gets hard. But at the end of the day, I, I have to sit back and remember like how many people not only are impacting me as an individual, but are impacting each other mm -hmm. and creating conversations and how much it means to a lot of people and really how much it means to me. It's, yeah. it's one of the highlights to every single day is getting on and seeing what people are sharing in these threads. It's, yeah. it's just incredible. Now, what are some of the, the, if you can remember any, cause you, you there's a lot going on in your yeah. feeds, brother. Yeah. Is there anything that stands out uh, in particular, um, like a convert, a certain thread or, you know, something that made you at the end of the day, just sort of laugh to yourself, like, wow, this is, this is pretty crazy that this happened or this worked out, you know, something that you um, posted, whether, whether it's someone was posting sunsets or posting water, what is there anything like that, that just sort of stands I, out? I think what stands out most to me is more broad, really, rather than something specific, because there are okay. so many instances, I think I could open up Twitter right now and pull yeah. out a hundred, <laughs> but I think as like a more broad range is, that there are so many conversations happening about people's images. And I remember specifically one time not too long ago where somebody had posted a photo of, well, I want to say a wide angle shot of a forest. Mm -hmm. And the amount of reach that that had was incredible. Mm -hmm. And it reached so many people and it was getting an absurd amount of likes. I was like, whoa, I was like, right. where all these people come from? Right. And I was super happy for the person. But what I love to see more than the likes were the replies. And everybody was like, whoa, where are you at? Like, how did you mm -hmm. take this? What gear are you using? Or they were saying, what kind of trees are those? They're gorgeous. And right. it just opened up a whole cesspool of conversation that mm -hmm. maybe wouldn't have happened on another mm -hmm. app. And I know specifically with my own personal experience from Instagram is you will leave a comment and the creator will go, great, great 
Great yeah. job. Thank you so much. <laughs> and that's all you get. Where here it, it happens to be more, you know, back and forth. Like there's more than just one reply. They'll talk for hours. Sometimes I'll check my phone. I'll be like, wow, they're still talking in the, mm -hmm. the thread. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it just warms my heart to know that, you know, I'm, I'm able to have people find each other and connect on something. Even if, even if, it, even if it is just a photo of trees. That's you know? awesome. Now, have you seen any type of, of bad actors, anything like that? Because this is the internet and we're bound to have some people that just sort of come in and troll and things like that. But have you experienced anything like that thus far within the community? Yeah. And it, and it's hard too, because those people get very upset whenever their images specifically get stolen. Ah. Um, I've had some experiences where people's images have been stolen and shared in my threads and the fake account is claiming that it's oh, you know, their photo. Man. And I've received a lot of DMs of people saying, hey, I just want to let you know this image was shared. You retweeted it, but that's not me. And so what I always do is I go back and I'll block the account and report yeah. them for you know stealing the property that's clearly not theirs. Good on you. And, Good on um, you. Usually I try to make an announcement as well and say, you know, if you're out taking images of other people's, you're allowed to post photos of other people's images, but please tag the creator and yes. let everyone else know that it's not you. Right. I think that's my biggest pet peeve where it happens very, very minimally. It doesn't happen a lot, but that's when it good. does happen, it just, it makes me kind of frustrated. It's like, why? That's you good. Know? That's good. Now, have you ever thought about Flickr? And, and, and moving over to that platform because Flickr has have, been around a, a long people. time and it, it's a very, very big platform and it's strictly photography based. You ever thought about yeah. it? Yeah, I've never actually used Flickr crazy enough. Mm -hmm. um, I, there are a lot of people in the community. I did a poll because I get curious what other people are doing. I said, if you're going to have to pick any, you know, website or app, I posted like Instagram, Facebook, Twitter or other. And I want to say 90% of the other was Flickr. And I personally haven't done it. I've considered, you know, kind of integrating that as well and moving over there. I just haven't mm -hmm. <laughs> found the mm -hmm. time with how busy I am with all this. Yeah. But yeah, I you got I a lot on your I plate think, right now, brother. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think in an ideal world, I would like to start with Flickr as well and, and continue that community and just broaden the range of it. Sweet. Well, I, I know a cat over there at Flickr. I may have them reach out to you and see if they could be of some yeah. assistance for you. And, and yeah, who well, knows? We'll, we'll see what happens. Send them my way. I could, I could use the help. <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure something out. Now, I want to transition into one of your images here and have you talk about it for a second here. So I'm going to pull up on my screen if this button works and then switch over to see your outstanding images here on Twitter. And this one right here, my man, you know, as you were talking about your, your process of just going out on the walk, everything you described is right here in this image. And it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, tell me a little bit about this one. First off, thank you so much. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> I love the kindness. It, it warms me. It makes me feel great. <laughs> um, uh, and so this image I took clearly not that long ago. I can't, I think the date said July 12th mm -hmm. is when I took that. I, I took that and edited on my phone and posted it immediately. I was pretty excited about it. It was a beautiful sunset and I was out on a walk with my fiance, Nicole, and I was like, whoa, these flowers are beautiful. And she was taking them with her phone and I was like, okay, I'm going to pull out my phone yep. and I'm going to take an image of this flower. And I really liked the wide angle with it. It yep. just made the composition look great. Yeah. And I love like the, the clouds kind of cascading in. Yes. And it and I when I was thinking of taking this image, I was like, this is what Indiana is. A lot of people think Indiana's cornfields and you know, boring yeah, because that's soybeans. exactly what I thought. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So I, I I like to take images like this to show that there is beauty. You just have to find it. You know, you have to look and you have to sometimes stand and stare weirdly in a direction for a long time until you find that piece. And then when you find it. An image like this comes out. Oh man! Uh, again, the composition here that you you captured is just unbelievable. As you mentioned, with the clouds just sort of giving you a bit of the bullseye that leads you to this flower right here in front of you, and then as yeah. a as a typical landscape 
um, photograph, you have layers to it. You have that foreground and then you have the middle and then you have the background all the way back there to the sun. It's just sort of, all right, I'm, I'm not quite gone yet, but I'm on my way out of here. So good night. Exactly. You know, just it's gosh, I love this. And this was done with the phone. Um, you're clearly not just standing straight up. You, you're, this is definitely down on mm-hmm. a lower angle and it, mm-hmm. and it shows. And with that wide angle lens, man, this is just, mm, just chef's kiss. Oh, love it. Thank you. Yeah. I was excited when I took it. I was like, Whoa, I was like, this is, <laughs> this even blew my mind. And I was there, I was in it. <laughs> Gotta love it. When that happens, gotta love it. When that happens, it's sometimes you click that shutter and you know, Oh, this is the one. This yes. is the one. Yes. Sweet. Well, my man, this has been a outstanding conversation with you. I really do appreciate you coming on. Is there anything else you'd like to share or plug or, you know, or tease that you may be working on or is coming up in the future that you could share? Yeah. The only thing I want to say is if you are on Twitter and you're, you know, moving from Instagram, maybe you want to still post photos and not moving towards video or maybe you just are looking for a new community and to freshen things up, definitely come check me out. My name's Braden Williams, but I go by Braden Creations on Twitter. So mm-hmm. feel free to come follow or post some photos in the thread. I retweet everything that I can when yeah. I have time yeah. and start a conversation, meet some new people and have a ton of fun. That's outstanding. Outstanding. Again, Mr. Braden, thank you so much for being on the show. I really do appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. It's been awesome. I'm, I'm excited that you asked me and I'm glad that I could share about this beautiful community that just is continuing to grow. And it's just awesome. <laughs> Sweet. Thank you again. All right, everybody. That's going to do it for this week's episode. Can y'all feel that energy? I mean, this this man, he clearly loves what he's doing. He's built a photography community there in Twitter and it, 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 it fires him up. And I love that energy. Isn't, isn't that just the great thing about photography? Oh, I love that. Okay. I hope y'all enjoyed this episode because I did. Uh, Be sure to give him a follow on Twitter. I will have his Twitter handle in the show notes. Of course, we've already going to have it show up on the screen and so forth. But give him a follow on Twitter and go over there and just say hey to him. Okay, I'd appreciate you doing that and showing him some support. All right. And in the meantime, after you've done that, Give me a follow over on Twitter. I am Ant underscore Pruitt. And if you want to follow me over on Instagram, I am Ant underscore Pruitt over there as well. Because as he mentioned, tw- uh, Instagram is doing a lot more video and I do both photo and video. So I'm starting to put some more video stuff over on Instagram. A lot of behind the scenes stuff of shoots and things like that. That may be helpful for you as a beginner or intermediate photographer. So go give me a follow on over there. Shout out to my man, Mr. Victor, for making me look and sound good each and every week on the show, because I know I challenge him quite a bit with his post processing. Thank you, Mr. Victor. You the man. And folks, please continue to share the show out with everybody uh, that's interested in the world of photography. Uh, Tell all your friends and family and tell an enemy if you have to. It does help the show out. And I really do appreciate all the support. All right. So until next week. Hey. Still be safe, y'all, because this virus stuff ain't going nowhere. So safely create and dominate, and I'll catch you next time. Hey, I'm Rod Pyle, editor of Ad Astra Magazine, and each week I'm joined by Tarek Malik, the editor-in-chief over at Space.com, in our new This Week in Space podcast. Every Friday, Tarek and I take a deep dive into the stories that define the new space age. What's NASA up to? When will Americans once again set foot on the moon? And how about those samples from the Perseverance rover? When are those coming home? What the heck has Elon Musk done now? In addition to all the latest and greatest in space exploration, we'll take an occasional look at bits of spaceflight history that you probably never heard of, and all with an eye towards having a good time along the way. Check us out in your favorite podcatcher. <laughs>